Hi, this is Blake Johnson from Entopology. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can build a tool to generate a bunch of design variations for your lattice uh, that maybe is infilling a bracket or some other part and analyze how they perform and rank them by certain properties like mass, uh, displacement, stress. Uh, and the first step here is we're going to create an NTOP file that just generates our part. And I've already done this, and we have lots of content online about how to import CAD and fill in a volume with a lattice and generate a final part of everything you need together. So I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward. But one key thing is that I've taken the important lattice parameters that go into the generation of this lattice and I've made them variables and then dragged them up to the top of the notebook uh, and made them inputs of my notebook. So you can see I've chosen the uh, unit cell geometry, the scale, and the uh, lattice thickness of the, of the beams, as well as the blend radius in between the uh, frame and the lattice. And I've also taken the final part and brought it down to the output of the notebook. So you can, you can zoom out from this uh, conceptually and say, OK, I have some, some inputs that are important that define a lattice and that I'm generating a body. And what I can do is take this file and go to a new uh, NTOP uh, instance and go to File, Import, and select this file I just created. And you'll see it says it was imported. And so now I just need to search for this Lattice Tool Generate. And now I have a small little block that I can use to create this geometry. It has all the other uh, blocks embedded in it. And the powerful thing about this is if I want to create two bodies that are a design variation of this, or, or many bodies, I can take any of these inputs and replace them with a list of inputs. So let's look at the lattice thickness. I'm going to create a scalar list, and I'm going to make the first one 1 millimeter and the other one 1.5 millimeters. And if I drag this in here, you'll see this uh, block became a list. And if I go into the properties, I see it has two bodies in it. And I can look at them. And you'll see I have two different to choose from now. So I've done this uh, with a little bit of, of more complexity in this file here. Um, here, sorry. Uh, I've chosen for my design variation to, to look at different lattice uh, unit cell types. And so I've created this volumetric rule list block. And I've, I've populated it with a few different types of unit cells and dragged it into the input. You see I've generated four, uh, four parts based on these, these four geometries. And if I, if I view this, you'll see they're all placed in the same location and they're all overlapping. And that's not going to be very useful for us to, to visualize. So see, everything is, is overlapping. And in order to visualize this in a better way, I can drag this list of uh, parts into a translate object block. And if that block has a vector of a, a list of vectors that is the same size, uh, so four vectors for the four parts, it'll translate them uh, such that the first item goes to the first vector, the second to the second, and so on. And you saw this if you watched the serialization on top live I did a, a little while ago uh, using the same process. So now I have um, the parts nice, uh, nicely laid out that I can visualize. And um, I can already start doing some analysis on this. So we have a block called mass properties on body. And or mass properties from body. So if you drag this part list into that, you'll get a listed 
uh, set of results for all of these mass properties. And I can go into the properties of this block and you'll see I have um, the center of gravity list, the mass list, and etc. So I can drag this out and I have a scalar list of all my masses for the four items. You see them listed here. And I can do simple analyses like that, but I can also uh, do a full finite element analysis. And so that's what I did next here. And to show what that looks like uh, inside the custom block, I'm going to open that up. So that is here. And this file takes in a implicit geometry based on what we've been working on, based on these different L brackets with the, the lattice infills. And it asks for a material, in this case, aluminum, and a mesh size. And it will take that in, mesh it, and run a static analysis on it. And the um, whole process is automated. So we can not worry too much about what's going on with the mesh or the analysis. Um, we've set up our boundary conditions based on the location of the holes from the CAD geometry. Uh, this is all stuff you can learn about just by um, searching our documentation for for setting up a static analysis or a finite element model. Um, and, and we've chosen a, a loading condition here uh, with, with fixed nodes on one set of holes and uh, force acting on another. And, and actually, this could be an input too if you want. You'd be able to look at the effect of different kinds of um, force boundary conditions. So if you wanted to try different directions of force or different magnitudes. Uh, but this is all set up. So if we go back to the um, the fresh new file here, you can see I can import that as well. So see that's imported. And if I drag this in here, uh, it'll take just a second to run, maybe a minute, but what's happening is it's running the analyses uh, in parallel on both uh, geometries that we've, we've created as a list process. So you can start to see how list processing can be really powerful. Now I've already done this. I'm going to stop that and I'm going to go back to our um, lattice tool file and we can look at the results here but it's not much to look at again because we have uh, everything overlapped in the same space. So I could pull up the results of the static analysis one by one and look at them and, and go back and forth or write down numbers. Um, but it's a lot more useful to, to keep working in lists. And so I, I'm, I'm going to show a way where you can take in a static analysis uh, as an input to a custom block and maybe a point in space where you know that you're interested in. So you want to know what the displacement will be or what the stress will be at that location. Uh, and we'll we'll spit back out vectors and scalar numbers that, that can be formed into a list for all of our parts. So I have uh, blocks or, or custom blocks set up for that. So this is the displacement probe. This uh, looks at the static analysis as an input and a, and a point in space and it probes that spot and says, okay, this is where my, this is what my displacement is at this point. And to do that, we, we create a point map from the static analysis uh, displacement results. So if this was populated, you'd have a list of all your nodal points in XYZ locations. And then the vector list here would be the, the displacement vectors at all of the nodes. And I've um, separated those out into the X, Y, and Z components of the displacement. Uh, and then created a new point map based on just X, just Y, and just Z, and created fields from that. Uh, so basically I'm just turning the displacement data into a field that I can probe anywhere. I can, I can pick a point and say, what's the displacement there? Uh, and so that's what this evaluate field block is doing. It's, it's uh, taking the X displacement field that we've interpolated from the simulation data, and it's, it's finding out what the value is at that point. So I do that for X, Y, and Z, and that itself creates a vector for me. So this vector uh, 
is the output of this block. So you can see it takes in the static analysis and the probing point, and it outputs this vector, uh, which will be the XYZ displacement at that point. And in a similar way, I've created a stress probe. This one's a little simpler because we just have a single scalar value for stress. But we have um, a von Mises stress point map. We turn that uh, point map of, of discrete data into a field using our field from point map block. And um, one thing about stress data is it can be kind of, um, it can have some numerical uh, anomalies in it. So, so you might want to smoothen the field, the stress field a little bit so that everything isn't um, too jumpy in the data and we can get a more generalized sense of what the stress is in that area. So I've used a smooth and field block and I've exposed the inputs to that block up into the uh, inputs of this custom block so that we can control the smoothening uh, even if we're not in this file. We can do it from the, the other file that we were looking at. Um, so, so both of these blocks are, are really useful because they can just take in a static analysis and spit out some important uh, metric, some, some you know, digestible Quanti uh, quantitative results. And there are variations to this, of course. You could, you could do the average stress. Um, you could do displacement along a plane. Um, whatever, whatever works for you, this is very flexible. But uh, I, I've created these tools, and um, we can see that I've placed the analysis list. Again, this is a list because we have the four parts. I've placed that into our displacement probe and our stress probe smoothened and out of that we get a list of vectors um, from the displacement probe uh, so so each part has its own displacement vector you see here and we have a list of stress values as well so each parts uh, stress at the probed val uh, probed location is is shown and I've um, just cleaned up these the, this these two data points into single scalar lists. Uh, well, so so this is already a scalar list, right? But the uh, displacement I've taken just the y component because that's something maybe I, I it's important to the design. I want to I want to make sure that um, I'm optimizing for the y displacement of this uh, this bracket based on the loading conditions I have. Um, so here we have some key metrics, including uh, displacement at the probed point, the stress at the probed point, and also the mass of the part. So remember the mass I got from this mass properties from body, right? I dragged the um, part list in there, and uh, I can now get this list of mass. And so this is great. Uh, we could type this, copy this into an Excel, or export text and, and do some MATLAB, but um, what is even cooler is I can stay in NTOP and start to uh, visualize all of these parts ranked by their uh, mass, stress, and displacement. So let's just look at the simplest example here. We have the uh, ranking of the mass. So the lightest is here and the heaviest is on the right. Um, and again, I, I'm taking a list of four objects that are overlapping and translating them by this vector list. And that allows me to look at all of them at once without um, overlapping. And how did I put them in order? So this is a new block that is available. It's called sort. And this allows you to, um, this allows you to rearrange the order of lists. And I'll just demonstrate that re real quick. So I could take a, a list of scalars and sort that. One, two, three, four. Well, this isn't going to be very interesting because that's already that. But if I jumble these up a bit, you'll see this, the result of the sort is uh, in the right order. So three, two, one, four turns into one, two, three, four. And that's great. but Actually, we can take it a step further by using this sort with a proxy input. So now I can use 
this proxy list to sort another list. Um, so let's say we have an implicit body list and it has all these shapes in it. Let's move, create this and create this. And one more. So if I put this into the input of the list, I'm now going to sort these bodies by the same ranking that exists here. So the this will be third, this will be second, this will be uh, first, and this will be fourth. So I'm able to use that to, uh, let's go back to my file here, sort the part list, remember the generated parts that we have, these four, I'm sorting them by the mass. So dragging in the scalar list into the proxy uh, allows me to do that. And if I set up the uh, translation vectors correctly, then now I have an arrayed uh, visualization of my parts from lowest mass to highest mass. And I've done that for all of the properties that I'm interested in. So we have sort by mass, sort by stress, sort by displacement. And if you watched the serialization implicit live, you'll notice, or you'll know that we can add labels. Uh, so I've just put M, S, and D for the mass, stress, and displacement. So now I'm able to do any kind of design variations. Remember, I could go back and change any of this I could add an item to the list, I could remove, I could uh, look at different properties, and it will generate this matrix of data for me, of, of uh, interact, you know, something I can interact with. And uh, I can also generate new kind of metrics. That's maybe a ratio to the mass to the displacement, uh, or other, other kinds of, of um, things that might be important, and, and then rank uh, and choose the, the part that I'm most interested in. And um, one more thing I'll show is, let's say, okay, that's great, but I want to get a little bit of a closer look into one of these designs. So I think I'm going to choose design three, or I'm going to say, I'm going to choose the third design. And so uh, how can I look at that static analysis result? How can I look specifically at what the number of the uh, value is. And what I have at the end here is something called chosen design. So the items in this list are 0, 1, 2, 3. And so if I'm going to go with item 0, 1, 2, or 3, I can, I can choose that here. And I can go in and look, oh, this is what my mass is, this is the stress, and this is the displacement. And I can also look at the actual result from the FEA and start probing things uh, with more detail. So you can see I can do anything I had uh, that was available to me from my uh, static analysis. I can do all the same uh, processes. Um, so I think in conclusion, I'll just say uh, this is a really powerful tool. You could take these files and modify them based on your own uh, geometry that you create and your simulation that you need to um, run and then um, from there run a whole bunch of different design variations and and end up with uh, the optimal design. Uh, so uh, I hope you found this useful and thank you very much for tuning in uh, and good luck. Thanks.